Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is Alan. They say each language makes people think and act in different ways. This is why I believe it's always very interesting and rewarding to watch foreign films. Especially if you're tired of the cliches and norms in your own domestic film industry. And even if you don't know what to expect or are worried that you might not get foreign films, you'll be surprised to see some very universal themes, emotions, and struggles. After all, we are all humans and we share far more similarities than differences. And to prove that point to you today, I want to take a look at five different Asian films that you might never have heard of that have influenced and inspired five Hollywood films you definitely have heard of. In 2010, I went into the movie Inception without knowing what to expect. I came out utterly fascinated with the idea of performing corporate espionage by jumping into people's dreams. It was such a unique and interesting idea, something that seems more and more difficult to come by in the science fiction genre. So when I heard about the Japanese film Paprika, I was naturally intrigued. Released in 2006, Paprika's plot centers around a machine known as the DC Mini, a small device that allows psychotherapists to enter the dream world of their patient. Dr. Atsuko Chiba uses this machine without federal approval to treat psychiatric patients outside of her research facility. When she enters her patient's dream world, she assumes her alter ego, Paprika, and helps patients deal with any issues they might be having. When the DC Mini is stolen, there's grave concerns that whoever is the culprit can now go around stealing other people's memories and just generally creating havoc in other people's brains. Shortly after this death, one researcher completely loses his mind and jumps out a window, nearly killing himself. While he's in a coma, recovering, it's discovered that a dream from one of his patients had been implanted into his brain, which caused his psychosis. We get a glimpse of the dream he's trapped inside, and it's a haunting sequence of a lunatic parade combined with an extremely unforgettable soundtrack. From then on, the rest of the movie is a chase to figure out who's stolen the DC Mini and driving people insane. I don't want to spoil the rest of this movie for you guys because I highly recommend you guys check it out. The creator of the film, Japanese director Satoshi Kon, is a once-in-a-generation talent and rivaled only by Meizaki, creator of Spirited Away. Unfortunately, Satoshi Kon recently passed away, so we won't be seeing any more of his talent. Now, aside from the central dream machine plot device, there are a few scenes in Paprika that Christopher Nolan seems to play homage to. Nolan has never officially talked about seeing Paprika or how the film has influenced him, but several critics have pointed out the similarities between the two movies. There are definitely not enough similarities between the two films to accuse Nolan of ripping off this movie, but there are enough coincidences that one might begin to wonder just how much of the film was actually inspired by Paprika. In my personal opinion, Paprika is far more disturbing than Inception, and it also does an excellent job at recreating the trippy sense of dreams in a way that only the animated format can. Nolan's film, on the other hand, is more of an action heist movie, driven by cinematically epic and interesting sets and outstanding performances by the lead and supporting characters. In other words, it's very Nolan, including all those very loud horn sounds. Which brings me to my next point, when two talented creators are so different in their approach, doesn't matter when they tackle the same subject. Lion King is arguably Disney's most successful and famous movie. When it was released in 1994, Disney made a huge deal about the fact that this was its first story that was entirely in an original narrative and had been in development for over four years. Which is probably true because you can always trust Disney. Now, there are some strong resemblances between The Lion King and a Japanese animated TV series known as Kimba the White Lion. Not Simba, but Kimba with a K. Kimba the Lion was created by Osamu Tezuka, known as the father of manga. Kimba the White Lion would become Japan's first color animated TV series in the mid-1960s. It was also aired in North America, where it became quite popular as well. While the screenplays between The Lion King and Kimba the White Lion are not very similar, one cannot notice the similarities between the evil lion Scar from Lion King and also the evil lion known as Claw from Kimba, who both employ hyena henchmen to do their dirty work. 
Then there are the similarities between the wise and grandfatherly baboon Rafiki and Bazura, the also wise and grandfatherly baboon in The White Lion. Then there's Zazu, Simba's close friend, who is quite similar to Polly Cracker, Kimba's close friend. There are also several scenes which are quite similar. For instance, Kimba also looks up into the clouds and sees his dead father, Lion Panja, just like how Simba saw Mufasa in the clouds in Lion King. To make matters worse, Lion King director Roger Allers, who claims to be unfamiliar with Kimba, worked as an animator in Tokyo in the 1980s. Kimba the White Lion was so popular worldwide, and also in Japan obviously, that when Matthew Broderick was hired to voice adult Simba in The Lion King, he assumed the project was somehow related to Kimba the White Lion, the TV show he watched when he was growing up. And that's basically what he told all of his friends. It's also been stated through interviews that several animators who worked on The Lion King were also avid fans of Kimba the White Lion. This is one of the only examples on the list that really rubs me the wrong way. And that's because Dizzy is not willing to give any credit to any potential artistic influences it might have taken from Kimba the White Lion. It's okay to be influenced by other arts. I mean, The Lion King only rips off the visual influences and themes from Kimba the White Lion. But as we mentioned before, it basically tells a very different narrative. But when you do take elements from another artist, you should at least admit that you're doing it. I mean, George Lucas, who we'll talk about later, routinely speaks about the influences behind Star Wars. And The Lion King and Kimba the White Lion, unlike Inception and Paprika, have far too many similarities just to be some kind of coincidence. And there's really no way that Disney would not have heard of this other very famous animated series. Especially because Osamu Tezuka's work is so widely known amongst the animation community. And while Disney and Tezuka have talked numerous times about collaborating, then again, what else do you expect from Disney? The Departed is an excellent film, not only because it showcases the brilliant New Englander accent, but it actually finally shows Matt Damon's true colors. It also has Martin Scorsese at the helm, which basically guarantees excellence. But some of you might not know that Departed is actually a remake of the Hong Kong film Infernal Affairs. Warner Brothers and Brad Pitt actually bought rights to this film a year after it came out. Of course, the major difference in the Hong Kong version of the film is that a police officer goes undercover in the triads in Hong Kong, rather than a police officer going undercover in Whitey Bulger or Frank Casello's gang in Boston. While simultaneously, a triad member infiltrates the Hong Kong police force, just like how one of Frank Costello's men infiltrates the Massachusetts State Police. Everything else in these two movies is pretty similar, including that final climatic showdown in the elevator. There are, however, a few minor changes. Instead of both men falling in love with the same psychiatrist, in Infernal Affairs, only the undercover cop has a therapist, whereas the mole in the police department has a wife as his main love interest. Infernal Affairs is still worth seeing, in my opinion, though, because these two directors, while telling the same story, have a very different style. Infernal Affairs has a much faster pace, as any Hong Kong action film would, and Andy Lau and Tony Leung, the main antagonist and protagonist, are considered some of Hong Kong's finest actors. Hunger Games probably takes the crown when it comes to young adult dystopian movies. After it came out, several other movies with very similar themes and characters flooded the market, like Maze Runner and Divergent. Hunger Games set a high bar for a very lowbrow genre with a lot of cheese. And since then, critics have pointed out how similar the Hunger Games' main idea is to another Japanese film called Battle Royale. In Battle Royale, after a massive recession, the Japanese government passes the BR Act in an attempt to discipline the Japanese youth. Each year, one class is chosen by the government and dumped on a remote island where each student gets a weapon and survival supplies and have to fight to the death for three days until one person is left. Oh, and they all have explosive collars around their neck. Hunger Games story also mirrors the setup. In their dystopian world, young representatives are chosen from each district in the world and put into a similar Battle Royale-style deathmatch. Now, Battle Royale has gone on to inspire several other movies. Even Quentin Tarantino has listed it in his top favorite movies. And yes, for all of you guys out there who play video games, Battle Royale did spawn an entire genre of video games, whether it's Fortnite, Apex Legends, or PUBG. They all basically follow that similar format. 
Suzanne Collins, writer of the Hunger Games novel, has said that she's never heard of the film or novel Battle Royale and claims that she got the idea from Hunger Games all by herself while watching clips of the Iraq War. In her defense, Battle Royale is kind of a cult classic and it wasn't widely distributed because of its very violent themes. It's well known that the original Star Wars movie has a lot of different influences. George Lucas has never been shy about this and has spoken several times on what inspired him to make the film. Topping off that list would most likely be the Flash Gordon movie serials from the 1930s. The second major influence would be Akira Kurosawa's 1958 film, The Hidden Fortress. It's a story about two Japanese peasants who are trying to escape a provincial war. They run into a general and a princess who are trying to hide from an evil clan known as the Yamana. The two peasants are kind of dopey in a very droid-like way, and they also happen to have a great plan to sneak out of Yamana territory, which the general is very much interested in. George Lucas was quoted saying how he really thought it was interesting that Akira Kurosawa told the story from the point of view of the two lowest characters. He also says that having Princess Leia in the film, another princess who must go behind enemy lines, is just a coincidence. If you take a look at the original version of the Star Wars script, a much older and more capable Jedi Knight was also featured in the story, and he was quite similar to the general in Hidden Fortress. Lucas also uses some film transitions that were first utilized by Kurosawa, including the famous wipe that has become associated with Star Wars films. Almost all art has some kind of influence from other forms of art, whether intentionally or subconsciously, and the more we're able to break these barriers between nations and cultures, I think the richer our culture as a human species will become, and that's an important part of our Humanity First initiative. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification down below. As usual, my name is Alan, reminding you that life is a movie and you are the protagonist.